Hi, this is Kanna Babu. In this video, we will discuss about serialization and deserialization. Before going to serialization, we must know about object. Actually, this is a very important concept when you try to work with WCF. Is it clear? So, first of all, we must know what is object. Right? Object is instance of class. Is it clear? So, instance means allocating sufficient memory space for the instance variables. Whenever we create an object for a class, then memory is allocated for instance variables. Is it clear? So, what are instance variables? For example, if we declare a class, the name of the class is A, bracket open, bracket close. The variables that are declared within the class, is it clear? Int x and here I will declare int y. So, the instance variables must declare inside the class and outside the method. Is it clear? Here I have, let us assume, static void main method, bracket open, bracket close. Is it clear? The variables that are declared inside the class and outside the method without static keyword is called as instance variables. Is it clear? So generally, now here for example, if I create an object for a class, so when the memory is allocated for instance variable, whenever we create what? Object for a class. Is it clear? So let us assume here, right? So here I will try to create an object for my class. The syntax of creating the object is class name. Object name is equals to new class name of. Actually, this is not class name, it is constructor name. Anyway, I will explain that one. So, here what is the meaning of this statement actually? Is it clear? Step number one is new. So, here actually, when you execute the program, program execution starts from main method. In this one, step number one is new. What is new? New is a dynamic memory allocation operator which will create what? Object. Is it clear? So, where object is created? Object is created on heap memory. Is it clear? Within your RAM, we have a heap memory. So, here object is created. So, whenever object is created, memory is allocated for instance variables. So, how many instance variables are there? Two. One is what? X. Other one is what? Y. Is it clear? So, whenever we create an object, memory is allocated for instance variable. That is step number one. Step number two, constructor is invoked. As we are not declaring any constructor, by default compiler will declare default constructor and the compiler will initialize default values for the instance variables. So in initially here, x the default value for x is int is what 0, string is null, uh, float is 0, 0.0, double is 0, 0, carry single space. And that is step number 2. Step number 1 is new, new will create object. So, whenever an object is created, memory is allocated for instance variable. Step number 2, constructor is called. Constructor is used to initialize the default values for the instance variables. Step number 3, reference variable is created. Where reference variable is created? Reference variable is created on stack memory. Actually, this is your what? Stack memory and this is your heap memory. And this object will have some address. Let us assume the address is 100. So, the address of this object is stored in where? Stack. This is 100 and this reference variable will point to the memory location that is 100. Are you following? The, the, these are the steps that are involved in object creation. So, step number 1 object is created, memory is allocated for instance variable on heap memory, and step number 2 constructor is invoked. Constructor will initialize the values for the instance variables. Step number 3 reference variable is created. Step number 4 reference variable is pointing to the object. Now, whatever the data that is stored in the object is not permanent, it is not persisted. The data that is stored in the object is temporary. That is, this entire memory is allocated on where? RAM. Whatever the data that is stored in the object is not persisted. The data that is stored in the object is temporary. If you want to store the object data permanently, that concept is called as object persistency. Is it clear? So now here I will try to store the value in the object a1.x is equal to 10. Here I will write a1.y is equal to 20. So what is happening here? So here actually as I told you previously that here object is created and memory is allocated for instance variable. Here instance variable is what? One is x, other one is what? y. Is it clear? And uh, then the constructor is called and the constructor will initialize the values for the instance variable. So, it will initialize default value 0 for x and 0 for y. Are you following? And then the reference variable is created. The reference variable is a1. And the reference variable will point to object. a1 will point to what? Object. 
and then a1 dot x is equal to 10. So here the x value is what? 10 and here the y value is 20. So whatever the values that are stored in the object, these values are what? Temporary. Temporary on RAM. So if you want to store the object data permanently, that concept is called as object persistency. So what is object persistency? Object persistency is a process of storing the object data permanently in a file or a database or in any external memory or any separate memory. That concept is called as object persistency. But here we cannot directly store the object data directly in a database or a file or in any separate memory. If you want to store the object data in a separate memory, we have to let us assume this is your object. Let us assume this is your object. So I want to store the object data, your object in a file. Or I want to store the object in a separate memory. Or I want to store the object in a database. Is it clear? Whatever the data that is stored in the object that is temporary. That is temporary means the object memory is allocated on RAM. File, external memory, database means this is hard disk where we can save the data permanently. What is the difference of storing the data temporarily and permanently? For example, if you store the data in the object, suddenly power was gone, your data will be lost. If you want to save the data permanently, either in a file or memory or in an external database, we cannot directly save. Are you following? We have to convert the object into stream of bytes. We have to convert object into stream of bytes. This concept is called as what? Serialization. What is serialization? Serialization is the process of converting object into stream of bytes. Because we cannot directly send the object via network. If you want to send the object via network, we have to convert the object into stream of bytes. And that stream of bytes will store in the file or an external memory or in the database. So serialization is a process of converting object into stream of bytes. The reverse process is called as deserialization. Is it clear? So here what is serialization? Serialization is a process of converting object into stream of bytes. The reverse process is called as deserialization. As we already discussed that we cannot directly store object data permanently in the hard disk or database or any separate memory. If you want to store the object data permanently, you have to take the support of what? You have to convert the object into stream of bytes. That concept is called as serialization. The reverse process is called as deserialization. Is it clear? So, so here we can achieve serialization in three ways. One is by using binary serialization, other one is soap serialization, another one is external serialization. As I told that we cannot directly store object data permanently in the hard disk. That is we cannot store object data permanently in the database or a file. If you want to store the object data permanently, we have to take the support of what? We have to convert the object into stream of bytes. That concept is called as serialization. And this serialization will play a very major role when you work with WCF. Because in WCF, generally the service requester and service provider both will try to exchange the data in the form of objects. But as we cannot directly transfer object via network, definitely there we need to convert the object into stream of bytes. And again, we need to use serialization as well as deserialization concept. Anyway, we will discuss that concept also in future classes. So, in the next video, I will discuss about how to work with binary serialization. For more videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and Facebook group. Have a nice day. Thank you.